Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is December the 4th, 2022. Hopefully this episode finds you well and good spirits. Hopefully good tidings even. Yes, yes. Uh, let's see, we can go to the food corner. We can start there. Actually, we're going to start with a little impromptu uh, drink tasting. Yes, yes. Uh let's pull it up here i got a tasty brew uh called bootsy i think it's yeah the brewing company is fretboard so i think that might be local i'm pretty sure it is um i'm excited because it's like seven percent um volume and it's an ipa so i know that's something that some people don't like but you know hey call me a hipster but i'm into it all right, all right, good. I think getting in the mic. Yum, yum, yum. Okay. Ooh, that's good. That's good. It's got that tart kind of flavor. Um, eh, you know, I'm not super descriptive. It's beer. It's IPA. It's doing all those kind of things that an IPA is going to do. So that's nice. Um, all right, all right, all right. Uh, some other food stuff. Other food things that I've done. Um, I uh, I was eating like crazy the other day. But I'll hone in on the, the highlight meal. Uh, it was Papa John's. Yeah, believe it or not, it was Papa John's. I got a order of cheese sticks. And then a medium pepperoni, sausage, and pineapple pizza. So, it was good. I gotta say, though, they make the loosest pizza, you know? Like, I don't know why it, it is that way. Um, I've always, like, liked their dough. Maybe that's weird. I mean, it's a hot take. But the thing that I never really loved about Papa John's, it just feels like it's just the most jiggly, sloppy little pizza. Um, but, you know, pizza is pizza, as they say, as the Caesar one said. Um, but, hey, it was good. I don't know why I, I doubled down there. <laughs> Um, this beer's working. No. Um, we can get into some news, though. We can get right after it. It is Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, let's see, I got this article from Reuters. Uh, spat of letter bombs in Spain targets embassies. High-profile officials. So, I, I guess the main focus of these letter bombs that I believe... Um, took place, let's see, they had, like, just some, I think, starting as early as November the 24th. Um, yeah, because that's when the package began, like, the campaign of packages began with Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez. Um, and, you know, Madrid was tightening security. But um, they start off this article with what happened on Thursday with the sixth um, device, uh, you know, potentially uh, going to the U. Um, yeah, this is the U.S. embassy. But um, I guess this was like trying to stop um, Spain's involvement with you know Ukraine and supporting and things of that nature. So. It's alleged and thought, at least from this article, that, you know, the this this is like a homemade thing, like the way these letter bombs were set up, but it it's not like oh, excuse me. It's not like any old Joe could make these these, you know, letter bombs, organize this stuff and, you know, be able to send it out. Um so they're not, you know, really saying, though, that they know, like, who did it. But, um, I'm trying to see what else I wanted to pull from this article. Oh, yeah, like, how the kind of, um, like, the way that it went off is it didn't necessarily, like, explode, but it would, like, burst into flames suddenly. Um, I know that maybe sounds like the same thing, but just... Just to kind of show that it was a different kind of bomb. Um, they were able to keep one intact, but the others, they more or less diffuse. I think 
a security official was harmed slightly. I think that was like the worst injury that was reported. So there you go. I guess weirdly, you know, abstract getting a little bit more Ukraine news here. There you go. A couple of stories over the weekend. Um, let's see. Let's see. Is there anything else I really wanted to cover here? Um, yeah, they cover like the stuff that they sent. A uh, thousand C ninety rocket launchers are sent to Ukraine. Um, but yeah, they also just cover like where the letters were sent out. Um, like all six of the letters that kind of cover throughout the article. So that's there. That's available. But I don't want to keep you too long on it. Um, let's see. The next story is a sad one. I'm gonna let you know here. It does uh involve the death of a child so you know just i guess you know trigger warning uh you can obviously skip ahead a bit if you're not interested in feeling this kind of story though there aren't too many details that are available to get into so i mean i can kind of thankful for that honestly but uh i got this from yahoo news uh and also nbc news fedex driver kidnapped seven-year-old texas girl who was found dead Friday, officials say. Um, let's see. Uh, the seven-year-old was Athena Strand. Uh, she vanished Wednesday. Uh, I'm trying to see the person's name. Uh, Tanner Lynn Horner, uh, who's 31, uh, was arrested on charges of capital murder and aggravated kidnapping. Now, they, um, you know, police have said that he has confessed. They also say that he kidnapped her and, like, it is, I guess, believed that she was killed about an hour after. And uh, they did later find her body. They did, like, have, like, a search party of, like, 200 people. Um, but, um, and it took place in uh, Paradise, Texas, in Wise County. But super sad story. Like I said, they don't have any motive or like how it was done. But um, it's always sad to hear this kind of story pop up because it, it just feels so random. Like, what could you have done? Um, you know, literally, she got home from school and then I guess this happened. And um, I don't know. I know. FedEx is saying that they are cooperating, you know, investigation or with the investigation with the investigation. Um, let's not wait too long on this one. Moving to the next, um, I would say this is a strand of good news, but it is it's one of those things where it's a blip, and there's still a lot of things to do. Uh, but uh, got this from the BBC News, Iran to disband morality police amid ongoing protests says attorney general um let's see muhammad jafar montazari um he um has made comments more or less saying that um the morality police which were responsible for masa amini's death um i mean granted not according to the state media line According to them, she had heart issues or something like that, and she died because of that and not because of the beatings she sustained from the morality police because of how she was wearing her her job. Now, with this being said, there's still a lot of um, religious legal red tape here that we don't even know necessarily if this is something that's a confirmed thing that um, the morality police are going to be disbanded for sure. Like, this is kind of like one hand is saying this, but the other hand might not say that and agree. Um, two, even if they are going to disband the morality police, the law is still going to be intact. There's not anything said about that. Um, and then there's another layer here too, which the people who are, you know, under this law are saying you know what like it's too little too late like that's really cool that you are going to potentially disband this morality police great but we are not wearing our hijabs it's not even about the hijabs like we need to change the power structure because this should never happen we should never be in the situation um and i think that is still <clears throat> in the thoughts and minds and hearts of the people 
and you know the protests that have been going on for months are probably going to still keep going so you know that's why i say this is kind of like a blip on the radar we'll see we'll see what happens but i will say it's good kind of like the chinese uh, the situation in china with you know protests having an effect it might not be a major re you know overhaul or anything like that but it does make a change in the right direction and sometimes that's what you take and you keep pushing you know over time and more things can maybe happen so um you know we shall see we shall see um what else are we gonna cover this is a little bit um of an obscure thing that kind of popped up like i heard it initially on the bbc news but in terms of looking it up i couldn't find like a super big article um to you know connect with it but um i got an article from i guess what it's called show me tech that is the name of the website and uh the title of the article is nine out of ten kidnappings in sp san paulo uh, brazil originate from tender so uh, it was definitely like kind of like a darkly interesting thing um just to hear such a high number 90 percent of the kidnappings that take place in you know this area are you know men and also women potentially trying to go on tender dates looking for love and you know potentially getting kidnapped and ransomed or in certain situations you are just getting immediately shaken like shook down um for like whatever you have and like beaten up um you know just bad stuff no good so uh, apparently this was um information from the secretary of public security of Sa sao paulo <clears throat> or the ssp um and i guess the bbc news is like involved with this article but uh i couldn't find it when i was looking maybe i was being lazy i don't know but um yeah, just super kind of bummer. They said, oh, here we go. The general demographic of the scam is being men over 40 years old with education and higher purchasing power. Uh, but the SSP also claims that women suffer from the scam with the situation using the same tactics to kidnap them. Um, and then also it kind of goes on to add like, you can get into situations where it's like, oh, yeah, let's meet up in this place. And it's maybe a little bit farther out of town or something else, you know, whatever. Maybe somewhere scenic you're thinking. And then you get there and it's like, oh, shit, like, oh, man, like I literally just like gave myself to my kidnapper. Like, oh, my God. Um, and they do um, add some tips to uh, protect yourself from a Tinder scam. Uh, maybe a little self-explanatory. We can run through some of them. Be suspicious of people who want to get off Tinder or dating apps too fast for WhatsApp. WhatsApp especially. WhatsApp, I feel like, is like, it's like this thin veil between, like, um, a black site and just, like, hey, I just don't want this encrypted. I just want this to be, like, a casual texting app or even, like, a universal texting app is kind of why people use WhatsApp. But I, I would agree. I'm not too into using WhatsApp stuff i've never had a good whatsapp conversation if the profile is deleted shortly after the conversation arrives on whatsapp ooh, that is a big flag uh suspect a possible concealment of information um yeah because that's that's weird i mean granted i i do know that some people will be like oh well now that we're talking on another app well i don't you know need to like have you on the dating thing it's just you know weird right but that's also weird that you're just so quick like Usually people want to have a little bit of a conversation, a little smoothing, and then you move into the next cell. And usually that's like um, either a text messaging thing or you use it on another app. Like, hey, let's go to Instagram or maybe Facebook or I've even had people talk on Snapchat because it's like similar to the WhatsApp thing. And I guess in a way, but there's no encryption on Snapchat at all. Um, your messages just delete after like, you know, a day. So sometimes people just kind of like that to have a casual conversation. Um, but even then, you should always just kind of, you know, keep your guard up and be aware for sure. Um, avoid using photos that show purchasing power, which I love that phrase, purchasing power. Um, 
such as international travel or luxury items and leave profiles on social networks locked. Um, I definitely keep my Instagram locked just because uh, I hate getting spam bots and stuff on there. Um, let's see. But um, those are definitely good tips. I don't know why you would be you be posting photos of your international stuff. Like, mm -mm, don't do that. And don't post any, like, uh, account stuff ever, period. Bank account, any account. <laughs> uh, make appointments in busy places uh, whenever possible. That's definitely a good one. Don't go somewhere remote. That's weird. Don't do that. Don't go to someplace isolated where there's like not going to be anybody but you and this person for a first date. Or maybe even the first few dates, I'd say. Some people can do a good setup and the next thing you know, the next one's in the second date. I don't know. I wouldn't want to get in that situation. Um, coffee shops, like little good like lunch date kind of things. Um, just general restaurants, I feel like, are fine. I You definitely don't want to go too far out of your comfort zone, I would say. Um, also, always let a friend know where you're going. Super important. So that way you say, hey, I'm going to go to this place. I'm going to be doing this. I'm at least going to be doing these things. And, um, you know, if the date's going well, I might hit you up, okay? Or if not, I might hit you up and say, hey, I got to get out of here, right? You might be my bug out excuse. That's perfect. That's super good. Always uh, phone a friend. Uh, that's a bonus tip from Isaiah's newsstand. Um, but that's more or less it for that, um, little dating tips, I guess, too, uh, but we got one more thing to go, we're kind of marching along, um, I'm gonna do my little break, and I'm gonna, you know, hit this Bootsy again, too, while I'm at it. Yummy. All right. I got this from Yahoo News slash the Associated Press. Jeffries wins historic bid to lead House Dems after Pelosi. So these are, you know, changes coming up for next year in the House of Congress. House of Congress. Um, but um, uh, this is kind of something we covered lightly with Pelosi, you know, saying that she's going to step down for, um, you know, as Democratic leader. Um, more or less, it's just been a seamless, I believe, more or less unanimous vote for Jeffries to take over. Um, that is uh, Representative Hakeem Jeffries. So that's cool. Uh, 54, oh, I said 54, 52-year-old uh, New Yorker. Apparently, also, he lives like a block away from Chuck Schumer who is um, the Senate House leader. So they or Senate, not Senate House, sorry, but Senate leader. Um, so that's, you know, cool, close neighbors there. Um, but, I mean, they go on to this article to kind of talk about, um, you know, Hakeem as, um, you know, a leader, you know, some of his tendencies, the setup of how it's going to be with, uh, I believe there are two others who are kind of coming up with him. Um, was it? I think like Aguilar and Clark, I'm going to be getting those names wrong, but not really that relevant, IMO. Um, but essentially they're going to be, you know, leading the party, at least that's kind of the plan. And, um, you know, we'll see how that goes. Uh, they are going to be the minority. So that's another reason why I'm kind of like, just, this is coverage just to say we covered it. Um, what is, let's see, Kevin McCarthy and the Republicans are going to be leading the House. Granted, they are a little bit more disconjointed, you would say. But you can also say, too, for the Democrats um, in the House, th that it's very factionalized. So, you know, someone like Hakeem um, is definitely more of a quote-unquote moderate centrist, whatever. And then you also have, you know, progressives who are, you know, trying to get policies that are way more left, um, what some might even say radical, um, really not. But, you know, to some people, it sure feels that way to them. 
Uh, that being said, um, there seems to be at least enough, like, I don't want to say, I, I do want to say conformity. Like, they all seem to kind of get along to get along. So I think that's an important factor for the years to come. Um, we'll see how it all kind of plays out. Um, we, they, there should be, yeah, there is a majority in the Senate and for Democrats and then a majority for the Republicans in the House with Biden, a Democrat, being the president. So, you know, we'll see how this all kind of can shake out with the balances. Uh, I really don't think Congress is going to get much done as usual. I kind of vaguely remember hearing that joke kind of growing up, not really understanding it, but like now doing this podcast covering news. It's just like, oh man, you guys just find so many ways to chase your tail. It's so frustrating. Even when you see like, and, and, and less it is a conservative majority through and through. Then it's different. Then everything is a different beast. Like they just move all the like shitty laws and reforms that they want and they just shove them down. Like, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I don't know. This is obviously a little bit of conjecture here, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> but um, thank you for sticking around and hearing my thoughts. I really appreciate it. Really love y'all. Um, thank you for being a listener. Uh, shout out to the newsies. You know who you are. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I won't do any shilling today. This is like the third extra episode. You know, you know what it is. You know what to do. Um, but hopefully I do see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye bye. Mwah.